Hi, thank you for joining us today. My name is Rodney West. I'm a senior Atlassian consultant with ISOS Technology. I'm joined today by Sean Parchman, our Director of Service Delivery. We're going to be talking about how Jira Service Management is the answer to helping you automate your processes. One of the big things we see is that a company has scaled past the ability to use their manual processes. And when I say that, right, they've been on the email, phone call, spreadsheet approach to managing their service management. And now, right, they're too large and those processes, they fall apart. Anything that has a manual component in it as you grow ends up being fragile. That's really one of the, the big problems that we see and it limits scalability, you know, and companies want to grow and you basically put this bounding box around them. Yeah, what we find is, you know, the team that's servicing the request aren't always the ones that can do everything about that request. So on an onboarding or an offboarding situation, you know, there's usually a hardware component and this and that that needs to happen. And those have to go to other teams to finish the, the process or to continue the process. And in that case, we can use automation to help spin off some of the subtasks and some of the other tasks that have to happen in order for that, sort of that request to be finished. And automation really helps with that round trip and making sure everything and everybody gets the piece of the ticket that they need. I think one of the one of the key things there is some of the word automation we're using in this, right? So basically, there are pretty strong automation features inside of inside of Jira Service Management. There was a set of built-in automations that they had, you know, prior to um, Atlassian actually fully acquiring automation for Jira Service Desk, which actually added a lot significantly stronger features. But basically, you know, a lot of these manual processes that you have out there, you've got your intake where you can automatically create tickets. But once those get inside of there, there is a host of things that you can trigger off of and actions that you can take uh, and conditionals that control flow that basically allow you to take, you know, whatever you're able to codify from those manual processes and even outside of the general scope of a workflow, put in there to where, you know, hey, this condition happens, take this action on, on the back end, email these people, create these issues, update these custom field values, you know, generate this host of linked issues that are required to complete this request, right? So, so basically leveraging that automation allows you to put it in the system so that everybody's following the same process and things are happening in a predictable, repeatable manner. Predictability was was very important in that knowing what's going to happen when it's going to happen. As Rodney said, the the options are almost infinite, and in either internal capabilities of service desk or even through the third party marketplace applications, the things you can trigger and the things you can make service management do, and the automation you can provide, we've done almost everything. I mean, I think it's that standardization and predictability. You know, we've done, you know, some of the ones that end up being the most interesting from a standpoint of automation are things you do to handle HR requests. And, you know, the reason I'm saying HR requests is HR requests end up having a lot of complications, right? Either a person is added to the organization, they're removed from the organization, or it's just an update. Somebody from HR that's actually fulfilling the request, they may know how to do some of the things, but they're not going to be granting passwords. They're not going to be getting the hardware that the, that the person needs, Right. There's, there's this whole host of things that have to happen. And whenever somebody's offboarded, basically the things that people have to be removed from. So you have automation there at different points in the workflow where it goes, okay, this person's in, their managers approve this. Let's go ahead and order their phone. Let's go ahead and order their computer. Let's go ahead and order their corporate credit card. Oh, by the way, they fit in this category. So we need to set this limit. So those are really good examples. You know, and that's what I always point to when I'm talking to clients, you know, when, when they're trying to figure out where automation might fit in for them is I always go employee offboarding. So you need to make sure you pick up, you have tickets that go to the IT department. So you get an automated, automated tickets that go remove access to system one, system two, system three. Go ahead and have facilities come out and, you know, basically there's things that need to be removed from, from their desk. There are, there's paperwork that has to be filled out that somebody from the HR team needs to work through with the person, you know. So it provides, it provides that framework for actually making sure that those processes are followed very closely and Basically, all those items are kind of checked off that have to happen without somebody needing to go out and find a document that says, oh, 
these are all the things I need to do to offboard somebody. No, you just go to a point inside of the workflow of your request. And at that point, it spins off X, Y, and Z. And then you go to another point in the workflow, it spins off additional things. And then you can check, right? So we're not closing out this request until we make sure all of these items that were spun up are completed. So that's really what the strength is. It gives you things to where you can have those standardized processes and you know that things are going to flow through in the way you want them to flow through and in the way it gives you traceability back into each stage of the process. One of my favorites uh, where yours is HR, mine is um, asset management, where IT teams can can monitor their equipment and make sure it's being serviced at the right time through automation. So you might have servers, you might have PCs lying in the, you know, out there in the wild with with teams and are they being updated? Are they end of life? Do they need to be replaced? Do your servers need to be maintained? Do do they need to be patching? Patching is a great example. If you have a patch schedule to have your automation actually create tickets for you on a quarterly basis, a semi-annual basis to to get that process going, automation can be really powerful in, in controlling the assets of your organization. Thanks for joining us today. Please contact ISOS Technology at isostech.com to learn more about how we can help you with your service management and answering your automation questions and processes.